Hi everybody, it's Diane. I am at my sewing machine table here and I want to do some work on these journals and just chat. Um, that I'm going to do a little bit of a few different things I think. So I'm going to start with this one. This one was um, claimed so this one is going to be reserved. The red book will be listed in my shop. I'm not going to reserve it. Okay, so I'm just I just want to list this one. But I went through and oh I added these. You saw me lay out the collage and do the Mod Podge on them. And <clears throat> I had already laid out how I was going to put the laces on these books. But I glued them on and then I added these, I think they're plastic. Um treble claps that someone had sent me and I thought that was a really nice um, embellishment to the cover so I added those and I got my pages all cut and put in the order that I want and then I went through and just was thinking about where to put the pockets now there are four of these kind of pockets in this kit which is um, the musician's parlor and it's from Kelly's Crafts by Kelly. And I'll try to remember to link the shop. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I also bought her set of tea cards with musicians. And used some of those already. So there are four pockets like this. And there's four of another, or two of another type of pocket. So I split them up between the two journals. So each signature will get one of the pockets from the kit. And then also, each signature, where did it go, we'll get one of the pockets that I made with my master boards, my mini master boards. <clears throat> each signature, did I say that? Each signature we'll get. Okay, so I was thinking about, I want something behind this rather than just gluing it to the page. And I was thinking about using fabric behind it. Um, so I just I just copy dyed some muslin yesterday and I thought maybe I would use a piece of this. So let's see how this goes. I'm going to tear it And I'll make this into a, a pocket also. So it will be a double pocket. I don't know if this is straight. Looks like maybe it is. I had coffee dyed paper the other day and I didn't coffee dye much as much as I usually do. I just needed some pages, <clears throat> some scrapbook paper for these journals, and then I just added some a variety of lined papers and things that I've been wanting to copy dye. I did some of those, but I didn't want to waste the rest of the coffee that I had mixed up. So I always forget to do coffee, um, to do muslin and cheesecloth. And I was running low on the copy dyed pieces of muslin and cheesecloth. So I did some of each yesterday. <clears throat> All right, now we're gonna work on this and see if we like it. And if we don't, plan B, which I don't have a plan B yet, but We'll think of something. Wow, how did that tear so small? Must be because I... Okay, it's supposed to be that way. So I thought I would... sew this on and then glue this part on. And I want something at the top to make it a little sturdier at the top. So 
on, let me see what I might have. Just looking at some ribbons. And I'll look at some lace. <clears throat> it's a rainy, dreary day here today. <coughs> Maybe I'll just do a piece of lace, um, just a cream colored lace, and it will be a subtle look because it's cream on cream. Somebody is messaging me on my Facebook Messenger, and it might be a group chat because there have been a couple of messages, but I will get to that when I can. All right, so I think I'm going to like the way this looks, and I just want to make sure that something can be tucked in here without this being a problem. I had this selected. See, I, I chose one of my collage tags to go in the digital pocket and then one of the digital tags to go in the collage pocket. Let's just see here. Find my foot pedal, there it is. So I'm going to make sure that the bottom of this uh, lace is sewn down good so that it doesn't interfere with removing a tag. Oh dear, let's start right off with a problem. I think I uh, had the needle off the edge of the fabric too much. I don't know if it is. Let me just see if it'll work on this. Because I don't know if it's jammed inside. Okay, seems good. Well, it worked out whatever it was. There's a, a knot there. But then it started sewing smoothly. So, let's <laughs> hope that it's okay. not jammed but it's kind of bunched up there on the corner so it didn't want to move forward so I'm gonna start further on to the lace and then I'll get back around to that okay we're good now I wouldn't have to sew down the edge because this edge will be sewn onto the paper but I'm just gonna so all the way around. And I have to go back over the part that got missed. And I almost forgot. So I hope that it's... Nope. I'm not going to try that. I'm just struggling a little here. Yesterday I had a better day than the day before. I mean, I worked hard. I went to work and then I went to Salvation Army and <clears throat> emptied my car of all the stuff I had filled it up with and then I came home and started putting more stuff in it. But I did a lot of work. Let's just... Um... I started going through books that I have um, set aside for journals and to use pages and stuff. So I have so many people. I have so many. And a lot of them I have already taken the pages out. I had already done that so that I could store the book covers without taking up so much space. But I still had quite a few books, like especially the larger books. The larger size covers, you know. I had, and usually I just want those for the pages, but I've had those on my shelf, so I need to make them small.
and I'm still going through photo albums. Um, I have so many photo albums. Took up an entire large bookshelf, which I won't have room for. So for months I've been going through albums. I took so many pictures, too many. And I'm taking the pictures out of the albums and um, putting them in piles or some for my son, some for my daughter, some for my granddaughter. Um, and some for myself, of course. I'm putting them in photo boxes. I'll be able to store them more nice, nicely. So I did some of that and I went through some books and tore the books apart and kept pages. And I'm thinking about whether I want to um, sell some, sorry, I'm going to get some glue, sell some sets of book pages because I've got some pretty cool book pages <clears throat> that I don't want to just, you know, toss. Oh, my. oh my goodness, my cap glued shut. There. I guess I didn't wipe the cap off very well or it oozed after I put the cap on. So anyway, that's laborious work, tearing a book apart, tearing out pages, going through albums. It's very tedious, but I still have more to do. But I did a lot of that yesterday, and along with some other stuff, you know, packing and waiting for my son to get me some boxes. I have boxes that I bring home from work, but they're big. And I don't want to put books and, you know, things that would fill up a... If you filled a box with them, they would be too heavy to lift. So I'm waiting for him to get me some boxes that he promised. So that I can actually pack more stuff. And I'm trying to decide when I want to pack up my craft room. And I will ink this. Let's do that right now. But anyway, I just, I worked hard yesterday, but I had a better day. And I'm going to say that today is going to be a good day, too. I'm just going to say that. Because I want it to be. Today is Saturday, and I don't have to work today, so I'm just spending the day working on these journals and doing some more going through books and photo albums. That's that's my whole plan for the day. And then kind of cleaning up the house because as I go through stuff, I just make some mess. Piles and stuff, you know. So I think I will put this one back there and I'll find something to go in there. You know, you don't have to put things in your... Oh, I know, Mrs. Cog's image. I'll do that later, but I'll put a Mrs. Cog's image in there. Um, I just like to put what I'm going to put in the um, pockets early so that I know what I'm using everything for, you know. Um, okay, so on this side, I'm just going to sew this down. I wanted to talk to you about a bad experience that I had on Etsy. I have not been talking about it um, because I was hoping that it would get resolved. But I just want to share it with you so that you can be confident in Etsy itself. I'll talk while I'm not sewing. And it was partially resolved for me, but because of the nature of what it was, it couldn't be fully resolved. And it, and I'm trying not to be upset about it. But it, you know, when you, when I tell you what it is, you'll understand why I would be upset. That is, I had saved several of my husband's 
button-down shirts. And my son took some of them for himself to wear. Let me tell you, when I printed tags and things, I printed um, shabby antique paper backgrounds from tailor-made journals on the backs. <coughs> but it didn't quite line up on all on the ones that were on the edges, so I'll have to uh, ink or put washi tape or lace or something down there. So that was unfortunate, but I'll do something to the tag. But for now, I'm just going to stick it in there. How about if I work on some... Where's the cover for this? How about if I work on some fabric flips while I tell you my Etsy story? Because I won't have to... I can just work on fabric flips and talk. So I'm just... I found this um, scrap of piano key paper. I thought I was all out of it. Or paper. Fabric. Um, but I found this little scrap of it so I can use that. Yay! All right, so anyway, I had saved my husband, some of my husband's shirts, and with the intention of finding someone who would make memory bears. And I finally sent them off to somebody. I looked on Etsy, and I found someone who makes them, and people, I read reviews, and people were thrilled with the bears. And so I sent six shirts and you know of course paid to have the bears made so it was a lot of money to have six made but I was going to give them to my grandkids and my daughter and keep one for myself for Christmas so I sent them she had said that in her blurb she said that she lets you know when when they arrive safely because she knows what you're sending her is precious. Well, she didn't let me know. Um, so I messaged her and asked, and she said yes, she got them. And, and I had asked her if they would, if they would work, if they would be okay for what she wanted to make, what she was going to make. And she said, I haven't really um, looked at it, at it, but I will let you know. I'm sure they'll be fine. And again, she didn't let me know, but I let it go. And quite a while went by you know I sent six bears and I didn't know how many other orders she had you know but having invested my money and my husband's shirts I wanted I kind of wanted to keep in be informed of progress so after quite a while I didn't know if I would get them in time for Christmas but I messaged her and asked just you know I said no pressure I just would like to know progress and she said they're coming along very well, and I'm hoping to send them next week, which meant that I would have them for Christmas, and I was so thrilled. I said, oh, I didn't expect to get them for Christmas. I'm, I'm so impressed and very happy about that. And then I didn't, I kept watching to see if they were sent, and no, they, they didn't get sent. So... I believe it was a couple days after Christmas, um, with a granddaughter that I don't get to see very often was coming down um, after New Year. So I messaged her again, and I said that uh, I was, oh my goodness. I'll let that go to voicemail. Sorry about that. Um, so... I said, okay, well, I figured since she said that she was hoping to send them next week, they must be almost done. So I said, I'd, I'd, all my grandchildren are going to be together on, this, on January 4th, so I'd really like to have them by then. You know what? I wasn't even going to sew these. I was just going to pin them because I'm just going to end up sewing them to the paper. It's not like I'm making these to hold on to for future use. I want to use them. So I won't even sew on them anymore. I'll just pin them. This one, this one I did a moment before I turned the camera on and I just pinned it. All right, so she messaged me back and apologized and said that they had had a family emergency and had spent 
had been back and forth to the hospital or in the, I don't know, with her daughter. Okay, that's understandable. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry that your daughter is having health problems, and I hope everything's okay. You know, I messaged her and told her that I hoped her daughter was okay, and I prayed for them. And she said, I'll get the package sent in a day or two. That is the last message I have had from her. The package has not been sent. Um, she doesn't respond to my messages. And I was scared, you know, something happened. She said there was health issues with her daughter, so, you know, maybe something horrible happened. And I give her the benefit of the doubt on that. And, and I feel terrible if something bad happened like that, you know. But that was $300 and my husband's shirts that I can't get back. So I messaged her a few times and said, you know, please just message me. Let me know what's going on. And I'm going to get a piece that's not so wrinkly. And she didn't. And I said, you know, if I don't hear from you by the end of this week, I'm going to have to open a case with Etsy. So she didn't answer. And so I opened a case. And I just, I want to tell you this because I want to let you know how easy it is to deal with something like this through Etsy. There's just, you go to your purchases and reviews to see what you have ordered and it shows you uh, when it arrived or when it shipped or all these things. It keeps you informed on that stuff. But there's a button you can click it says open case so I opened a case and it wanted me to just you know briefly state what was going on so I did and they said that they would you know be in contact with her well I thought if, if she's not responding to me and something has happened and she's not even looking at Etsy which would be understandable if something bad happened, you know, how is she going to respond to them? So I just, I was worried that I was going to lose my investment in that. So she didn't respond. They gave her several chances and they gave me a chance to, I don't know, I had to make another comment whether I had received anything or not or any communication and said that I had not. So what they did was they refunded me my money plus my shipping, but not, of course, that whatever it cost me to mail those shirts. I didn't get that back because that isn't shown on my order history or whatever. And of course they can't get the shirts back for me. And she never replied to them, responded to them. So I'm, I'm worried that something happened. Oh, there's another piece. Um, with her family. And I'm really sorry about that. I did message her again and told her, you know, if those shirts are done or close to being done, I still want them. Those bears, I mean. And um, I've had nothing back from her. So, they refund me the money, and then they have to try to get the money from her. That was, a long, that was a long story to tell you that. So, I didn't have to worry about not getting my money back because Etsy took care of that. And then, if she doesn't... Hmm, my printer just came to life. If she doesn't respond to them and pay them the money then they will close her account. So I am glad that I got my money back, but very sad that it ended this way. I really wanted to do this for my family, and I'd put it off for too long. 
and I don't have the shirts now to have it done. I have three more shirts and my son had taken some shirts so I could ask him if there are any that he doesn't use that, that he could contribute. But I'm, a, I'm leery of it now, I'm sure you understand. I wouldn't send them to her but I would... <coughs> there are others that make them... so I don't know. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. But I am glad that I got my money back. I'm sorry for her, for whatever's going on. And I'm sorry that I lost out on my husband's shirts. And I hadn't told my son and daughter what I was dealing with because I wanted it to be a surprise, you know. But I did tell them. My daughter was really sad because she was going to get one of the bears. But, you know, we did the best we could do. Things happen. So, on to better things. You can see I'm just, I've already pulled out fabrics that I think would look well. I had these extra pages over here while I pulled fabrics out so that I could just kind of make sure they went with the colors of this kit. I already have the fabrics pulled and I'm just pulling them and creating combinations that I like and making fabric flips. And I like to add little bits of lace or something. I had this little stamped piece of muslin so I thought I would add that. I'm going to sew that on right now. going to have to take some time to stamp on some more muslin because I really like using little pieces like that. Back up a little bit. I went too far. Okay. So I'm thinking about when I'm going to pack up my crafts, craft studio which means I won't be able to make anything more. Um, I definitely can't move before February 15th or something like that. And I don't know if I'll be able to move then. I don't know when my new place is going to be ready. But what did I have for a background here? I just tossed it aside and now I don't even, don't even know what the fabric was. Oh yes I do. It was this piece. <laughs> oh boy. Um, but there's a lot of stuff to pack so I'm going to have to start packing some of it even while I'm still crafting. I, you know, I need to keep um, making things for some income. Um, I don't I don't want to waste too much time not having an income, you know? I mean, it's not wasted. I don't like that. You know. But anyway, I don't want to leave the packing of the craft room to the last minute either because it's going to be really bad. So, I was thinking I might do something simple. I thought these journals might be my last ones but I think it's going to be a while before I get set up. My closing date is on the house is um, February 28th. And these pages aren't very wide. I hope I'm not making these flips too big. But I hope, you know, hopefully, I have to have everything out of the house by the 28th because once we sign the papers, I can't come back here. I guess we're okay. Um, so 
so I just don't know how soon I'll be able to start moving my things into the house, my new place. Um, but, so I was thinking that these music journals might be the last ones. But now I'm thinking maybe I'll do some simpler things, like I did glue books. Uh, the last project was glue books, just because they were more simple and I didn't have to think too much. <clears throat> but I'm thinking about doing a series of books with um, the My Book House books. I didn't realize how many I had. I just found a couple more at an antique store. And I brought them home and went to see what else I had. And I think I now have seven. I think that's how many. Seven of the My Book House books. And only two are duplicates. So I was thinking of doing a series of them which would be lightly embellished. Not lots, like uh, maybe some pockets. Um, maybe a little lace, I'm not sure. But I could pack up supplies and just have out enough for, leave out enough for making those books. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and so I could still be able, plus, I just don't want to not craft for weeks on end, you know? Um, I think even before my craft room is set up, fully set up in my new place with the shelves on the walls, because I can't do that myself. I'll still be able to, you know, get into boxes and get supplies. So I'm thinking once I get moved in, it won't be long before I actually can start creating, even if I'm not fully set up. <sighs> Maybe you don't care about all this stuff. I'm just thinking out loud. So anyway, I thought that would be nice if I could just gather what I would need to make some lightly embellished books for using those My Book House books. <coughs> Plus that would take, I don't know if I would make seven of them. I probably wouldn't make that many at this point. But it would um, mean that I wouldn't have to move that many books. That's just a uh, drop in the puddle. Is that how you say that? It doesn't sound right. Drop in the bucket of how many books I would have to move, but hey, any little bit helps. I'm trying to find a little piece of lace to put on the top of this, even though this is lacy. <clears throat> how about just a little piece of, uh, you know, that stuff, that stuff. Filet crochet. That's what it is. I think we'll go with that. All right, so thanks for listening to me ramble. <laughs> and I'll just go back to working on pockets now that I've told my saga of the memory bear project that went awry. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. That would be one for each signature. Maybe that will be enough. Sometimes I put two in a signature. <coughs> so let's just set that stuff aside and go back to adding some pockets. Now, the last time I did a long, is this the, yeah, this is the book I started on. The last time I did a long video, my camera cut off abruptly. And that was because I, I lost my camera card with the, the bigger camera card with more gigabytes, so I have a smaller one in. And I had a video on there that I hadn't deleted, and I just ran out of 
ran out of space on my camera card, so it shut off. But I was almost done with the video. I just don't like it when it ends that abruptly, you know. Piece of scrap here. Piece of paper that got ruined in my printer. So I did try to... I took my ink out. It's one of, one of the printers that has four different cartridges. It has the three three colors plus black so I can just replace what's needed and someone recommended that I take the ink cartridges out and just put them back in and then it might realign and not make those lines on my oh, man I can't even talk the lines on my papers that I'm trying to print so I took the cartridges out and then I put them back in and now it says that the black is damaged so it won't do anything. So And I didn't have a spare black. So I ordered some from Amazon. It should be here Sunday, I think, tomorrow. So I can't really try out my printer until I get the new black ink. But I thank you, those of you who offered suggestions. I don't even know how to clean the head. But it's something I should learn, I know. See, this one was in the center of the page, so that one turned out fine. So I think I'm going to add a little bit of something to the top. A little topper. My little bits. I've got to organize all my fabric over here. I've just been kind of... It's semi-organized, but <clears throat> I need it more organized. That's not. See, I have a little bucket of fabric bits and a little bucket of lace, and they're mixed up. They are all mixed up, so I have to fix that. So maybe this little scrap here. I could just make a tab with it. Just use the pin to pull threads out <clears throat> so both ends will be frayed. Oh, so talking about moving and my time frame and everything, one thing that's kind of stressing me out is that months ago I had registered for a conference in Indiana and it's a conference about counseling. Not that I want to be a counselor, but I teach Sunday school, ladies' Sunday school class. So I'm a Bible teacher, and I have grandchildren. And I mentor some people, young ladies in my church. And I thought it would be good to have this counseling. And it's, this isn't just for professional counselors. So anyway, my church, my pastor and his wife are going and, you know, they had put it out there for anybody interested in going and quite a few people were interested, but it turned out that only two people registered besides my pastor and his wife and that was my son and myself. So that is the second week in February and I can't believe, you know, I'm gonna, I would want to be in full throttle packing mode at that point. And I just can't believe that I'm committed to doing this. It's non-refundable. And like Judy said, my daughter, she said, I said, if I had known, I would not have registered. And she said, but God knew. God knew when you were going to move. And he didn't tell you <laughs> until after you registered. He wants you to go. So... This is a period in my life where I am just trusting God big time because I don't have any other choice. I have to trust him with everything. Uh, I trusted him with selling my house and he did so great, better than my, better than I could have hoped. Is how fast it sold. And I figured if he sold my house that fast, 
then he's got a plan for me and I'm going to be okay. <laughs> so this is a, I'm considering this a growing period. Every period in our life should be a growing period. And some, I didn't know why it was printed on the back, but it's not. It's just because I folded it over. But I'm going to waste that beautiful printing. Yep, that's the side I want to glue. So yeah, I'm just praying daily for patience and faith and trusting God to work things out and asking him what he wants me to do, what steps I need to take. So I'm going to try hard while I'm at this conference in Indiana to pay attention, not waste my money and my time by wishing I was here and thinking of all the things I could be doing here <coughs> and just learn what God wants me to learn at this conference so that I can help other people and probably help myself too. I'm sure it will be helpful for me. This paper is crinkly because I copy dyed it so I'm making sure that that glue holds it down real well. And I did put a digital tag in this digital pocket because that's what fits. So this is the second signature, the type of um, pocket. This is the other type of pocket that was in the kit. There's two of this type. And here I have my collaged um, pocket that I made. I'm just going to make it a tad bit shorter. It fits, but I want it to be a little more comfortable. So I just, I'm just taking a smidgen off. See? Not much. And that helps. This is one of the uh, ephemera pieces from the kit. There's some guest checks in addition to the tags, and there are um, I don't know where they are. They're little journal cards with a tab on them. They're part of the embellishment, or yeah, the embellishment part of the kit too. But they all come together. The only uh, extra purchase that I made was the. Um, cigarette or tea cards. So I don't know if you want to keep watching. I'm just going to do the same thing in this on this. Um, signature. Add some muslin here for a pocket and put this down. Did this fit in here? Yep. But why don't I have an embellished tag in there? Because I put it over here. Let's switch. Oh, got a voicemail now. Goodness. I'm very, my social, my phone is very busy today. Okay, so I'm going to put that there and that in there. Okay, I like that better. I didn't I don't want it to be so busy having all this collage stuff together. So, I'm just going to sew this down cuz I don't I'm not going to add muslin and stuff to it. That'll be quick. And then when I do the muslin and glue, sew the other pocket on, then 
those kind of pockets will be done in this signet in this journal. Then I'll probably add my fabric flips and some lace to the edges of the pages and then we'll see what else we need to do. So hopefully I'll make a couple videos today because I want to spend a lot of time working on this on these journals today. And I will ink. Oh, I don't need to ink the back. I just need to add something there. How about if I just add a piece of lace there or some sort of trim? How about a ribbon? Got some ribbon there. trim off a smidge it might be wide enough. Yep. I don't know why I just <clears throat> cut the ribbon with my Tim Holtz scissors. My fabric scissors are right there. ink that white space it wouldn't blend in like that so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with the tags maybe some washi tape I don't want to make it hard to put the tags in and out by putting too much stuff on them you know I think what I will do though is ink the very edge just to make sure that it doesn't peek out and just look white I saw a video of Tim Holtz showing his 2020 collection. Um, not the stamps, I have that in my watch later queue, but his products. And I want all of them. <laughs> well, not all, but I want a lot of his new stuff. I really don't want all of them. There's a lot of stuff in there that are cool, but I wouldn't use them. It's not stuff that I would use, but it's all cool, of course. <clears throat> but there's quite a few. I want to try his embossing glaze powders because you can see through it. And I really want to try that. He made that video before Creativation. I just got around to watching it now. Okay, so I am going to stop the video and finish this pocket, and then maybe I'll come back with some more stuff. I'll see you, well, it, and it'll be shown the next day. So stay tuned, and I'll be back. Bye-bye.